Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Drives everyone crazy. Uh, and in today's video, uh, I have been very, very hard at work on my set of SQL Server performance analysis scripts, stored procedures rather, uh, to help you help yourselves a little bit and also to help me because as a consultant with very reasonable rates, uh, these are all um, things that I thought I, I would find useful in the work I do. So hopefully you will find them useful in the work you do as well. <clears throat> so in today's video, we're going to talk about improvements to SP Health Parser. Uh, for, those of you, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, uh, I dropped this one um, sort of at the end of, towards the middle end of last year. Um, and what this store procedure does is, you know, every SQL Server since uh, about SQL Server 2008 or so has um, an extended event running on it called the System Health Extended Event. That thing is full of awful XML hell and it's a bad time. So I wrote a store procedure to parse it all out, put it all into helpful tables for you. And um, the recent additions to it are um, some events that I was not collecting before and the ability to log those events to tables. So we're going to talk through that stuff in this video. But before we do, we have some important stuff to talk about. Uh, if you like this channel content and you would like to sign up as a, as a say thank you with money member, uh, link down in the video description to do that. Um, if you are, you know, just a irretrievably broke college student or something, I don't know, maybe I don't know. Maybe the maybe maybe the uh, stock market stuff has you a little 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 weaselly about four bucks a month. Uh, you can do other stuff to help my channel uh, survive, thrive, and um, whatever else whatever else channel these YouTube channels do. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and if you want to ask me a question, a question or more than one question, you can ask a thousand questions if you want uh, that I will answer on an office hours episode. You can do so at the link up here, which is also down in your video description. Uh, if you need SQL Server consulting help, perhaps uh, the output of these scripts is just not enough to help you figure out exactly who, what, where, when, and why did you did your SQL Server dirty. Uh, I am available. You can hire me. Uh, I will make your SQL Server faster in exchange for money. And as always, my rates are reasonable. Uh, if you would like some training content to help you get better at SQL Server, uh, maybe without a uh, you know, live and in-person Zoom call with me, you can get all 24 hours of my training, uh, beginning, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, 75% uh, off. It's about $150, US uh, and you get that for life. Uh, again, fully assembled link down in the old video description. Uh, SQL Saturday, New York City, 2025. That is this year. That is, oh boy. Closer, closer by the day, isn't she? Uh, Saturday, Saturday, May 10th, uh, taking place at the uh, Microsoft offices in Times Square. Uh, so be there or be square or be in Times Square. Uh, it'll work itself out. Anyway, let's talk about the improvements to SP Health Parser. Now, um, this thing does a lot of work. I don't want you to be too scared and taken aback by the code. Um, the stuff that I want to show you in here is around, well, I'm going to show you the, a little bit of the code and then we're going to talk through like, um, uh, other stuff like how it works. I'll show you it working basically. Uh, so what this does is, um, it'll go through and I, I think I skipped down a little bit too far. Let's get back up a little bit higher here. So, uh, if you decide to log to a table, um, then there are some changes that I make. Like I don't log the locking stuff to the table because I have, there are other facilities for doing that. If you want to log deadlocks to a table, SP, SP Blitz Lock does that. If you want to log uh, the block process report to a table, we're going to talk about that in the, uh, the next video or two uh, because I added, I added this to Human Events Block Viewer as well. So it'll uh, create these tables. Some of these are the new ones. So um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven or twelve tables that will get created, and all of the stuff will get logged to the table in here. Um, 
The new ones are, I believe, uh, memory broker, memory node out of memory, scheduler issues, and severe errors. Uh, these are all the new stuff that I'm collecting. There are There's stuff in the system health extended event for all those, and I just decided to get busy with the XML on that. Uh, if you are logging stuff to a table, um, I do a few things. Um, if you specify a schema that doesn't exist, I will create that schema for you. If the tables that you want to log to do not already exist, then I will create all those tables for you. That is what this lovely mess of dynamic SQL does uh, all in here. So uh, that's a lot of fun, right? Like, oh, look at all this wonderful dynamic, very repetitive dynamic SQL. Uh, part of what the, this thing does is it has a data retention policy on it. So um, you, if you want to keep 30 days or seven days or two weeks of data, uh, this will help, help you uh, achieve that. And it'll start every runoff by deleting from the tables where um, those where the, the times are older than those dates or whatever, however you want to put it. Uh, once that's done, uh, you know, your temp tables get created. And let me actually skip down a little bit further. Let me make sure I don't like cursor down to where I should. Uh, so what this will do is if you decide to log to a table, it changes the select query slightly, and then it does an insert uh, to the table. But another thing that it does, um, there's an insert SQL thing that gets built up based on the table definition. But um, one thing that this thing does is it makes sure that you're not you're only putting data in that's new. So there's this MD SQL part in here. And what this will do is find the max date currently in your extended event and currently in your logging table and filter out whatever data we collect to only get data from that point on. So you're not just constantly logging new crap in there because that would just be a nightmare. Uh, and then, you know, we do the insert into the table. And if we don't do the insert, then we, um, then I just like would return the result out to you. So uh, what we're going to do is stop looking at code and come over here. This window has SP Health Parser stuff in it. Uh, and I've set up this DBA database that has no tables in it. I just hit F5. Oh, oh no, this thing tried to, it's complicated. My computer's stupid. Uh, so with all of my store procedures, um, there is uh, a help parameter, and that help parameter will tell you all sorts of good information about um, what the store procedure does and all of the parameters that are available to it and what those parameters do, their default value, stuff like that. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to run this in debug mode just so we get a bunch of stuff back to look at together. Uh, and I don't want you to be scared at all because, oh, that should have been like seven or something, but it doesn't matter because we're only running this thing once. Uh, this does take a second to run because it does a lot of XML parsing. Um, I don't know if we got to a point in here where the XML starts to get parsed, but uh, boy, is there some heavy duty XML parsing. This isn't my fault. I wish that there was another way to do it, but Microsoft stores all this stuff in XML. And so uh, as your, your humble SQL server servant, I am forced to parse that XML to make you happy. But um, anyway, this thing is successfully run. Uh, we have a bunch of debug output. This, uh, this would not normally get returned to us, but uh, because I ran this in debug, we, uh, we get a bunch of other things back. Uh, over in the messages pane, <clears throat> excuse me, over in the messages pane with debug enabled, of course, uh, it'll tell you that we created tables and uh, it'll show you the uh, inserts that we did. Anything that happens in the dynamic SQL, it'll show in here. And if we get down a little bit lower, we should start seeing the uh, insert queries. Uh, this, is the date, this is the dynamic SQL to find the max date uh, that's currently in whatever table we're currently about to insert into, and then pass that in as a parameter down in here, right? That's this thing. So we do our insert and we uh, get data and then we can look at data. So just to make things a little bit easy, let's just grab uh, one of these tables. Let's refresh this. And now we see all of the tables that got created in here. Um, I don't know which one is going to actually have stuff in it, um, suppose we could try looking at weights by count. That usually has something in it. And here we go. Here's what the table returns. Uh, we have the collection time. Uh, we have the event time rounded. So the event time rounded, it, uh, by default, this will bucket by the hour. So all the weights that happen in an hour, it'll sum up and give you the average wait time and the max wait time. The max wait time column is a little tough to deal with because it's the max wait time that's been recorded like since 
actually I don't know since when it's either since like startup or since the extended event has stuff in it, but this column gets very repetitive and it doesn't always lead you to exactly where, um, you know, the weight spiked up to have a, have a max wait time of two seconds for async network IO. But anyway, uh, it, this works pretty well. Um, one thing to note about, uh, SP, uh, health parser is that not all, uh, events are going to have data associated with them. So kind of like coming back up here to where the tables get created. Um, some, like some of these, if you don't have problems, nothing ends up here. So if some of these tables are empty, that's a good thing. Like for example, example, like if like memory node OOM, that's out of memory. If you don't have memory nodes that, sh that like end up with out of memory conditions, there's nothing, there's no XML in there. There's not XML that says nothing happened, right? There's just no XML. So nothing will end up in there. So if some of these tables are empty for you. That is why. Anyway, uh, that is a quick overview of the improvements made to SP health parser. Um, I hope that you will find yourself, uh, enjoying these improvements, maybe logging stuff to tables, maybe trending these things over time. You can do all sorts of fun stuff, like put them in an Excel file or, I don't know, use DuckDB or whatever, whatever crazy things you people do to analyze data and you can uh, start figuring out SQL Server performance issues. Um, you could also like do this stuff and hire someone like me to go through the data and figure it out for you, which is also a pretty good plan if I, if I do say so myself. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next video where, where we are going to talk about improvements to SP Human Events Block Viewer. Anyway, goodbye.